I tried the new keyboard from Asus, so you don't have to. Wait, wait, wait. Actually, let's let's cross that out. I think you might want to try this one. Howdy, hey. I'm Hippiotech, and <coughs> I'm decently sick, just like this keyboard. Now you're probably thinking, Hippio, why might I want to try this keyboard? Well, it's got some of the most interesting features I've ever seen in a gaming keyboard, and some that are better than enthusiasts. <laughs> Now, this keyboard might be decent, but I can do better. So I'll also be putting it to the test to see what it would be like if a Hippiotech broke into your house and modded it for you. Oh, yeah. Speaking of breaking, 80% of you are breaking my heart by not subscribing. And if I hit a million subscribers this year, I'll dye my hair blue. Now, first things first, this video is sponsored by ASUS. They did not have the chance to review it and did not tell me what to say. All my thoughts are my own. If you don't believe me, look at the last sponsored video I made for them. They weren't that happy about it, but I guess they sponsored another video. Now, taking a look at this, the first thing you notice is that it's branded for gamers. Am, am I a gamer? A gamer hippio now? This is the ASUS Republic of Gamers Azoth, and it's their first uh, attempt at making an enthusiast grade keyboard. Kind of. Now, as a channel that looks at a lot of keyboards, I'm gonna be putting that to the test. Some notable features that we'll check out are gonna be the wireless, the stabilizers, and the modability. But hold on, that's not actually the coolest thing that comes with this keyboard. Hint, it's in this box that we're gonna check out in just a second, but yeah. <laughs> Similar to my ambitions of becoming a lawyer, I'm gonna throw away all of these manuals. And the box, we really don't need that. Oh look, it's the box I was talking about earlier. Now, as I mentioned before, this keyboard is trying to be a bit more enthusiast, and holy moly, this is the most impressive accessory package I've ever seen with the keyboard. Now, unlike Glorious, that would charge you about $100 for all these accessories, this keyboard comes with Crytox 205G0. That is a lube for lubing your switches. And oh my God, it's on my fingers. Dear God, get it off my fingers, please help. Ah, sorry, I can't really commit to the bit. I am actually sick right now. It also comes with a nice little extender so you can put your wireless dongle in here and put it on your desk, which is very nice. And we'll talk about the wireless soon. And a switch opener that also opens Cherry MX switches despite the switches that come with it being kale style. It also comes with a brush that is remarkably subpar. It's already fraying, but hey, it'll get the job done. And the one thing that I cannot help but miss here is a stem holder, like the one pictured here from Kinetic Labs. If they included a stem holder, this would be a 10 out of 10 beginner modding setup. Like if you wanted to lube your switches here, you can use the little lube station, you can take them apart, put them back together. This would be perfect for beginners. Speaking of perfect, the cable that comes with it is not coiled, which is very nice for me. Oh, it's it's not perfect, but it's a cable. Now I might've spent a lot of time on the accessories, but I mean, it's really cool. Like honestly, I was kind of blown away with that accessory package. But now let's talk about the keyboard. Now, first things first, the price has not been finalized and it's somewhere between 250 to $300, maybe. That I, they're probably gonna get mad at me for saying that. Also, the release date hasn't been finalized, but you can keep an eye out for it by clicking the link down in the description. Who knows, it could be out when you're watching this video. Now, this is a 75% keyboard, meaning that they keep the arrow cluster, they keep the F cluster, and this is my preferred type of layout. It is such a good layout, maybe even the best. Speaking of the best, these stabilizers are the best, and I'll be talking about them very soon. Like, I'm not just saying that, they are really good. Now, looking at this keyboard, it has a remarkably gamer aesthetic, which, of course, they were making a gaming keyboard here. Some of you might like this. Personally, I think the aesthetics of this board are, albeit a little bit tacky. The top plate is made out of aluminum, and then the bottom housing of the case is plastic. Now, I'll explain why that is later, but... Oh, flippy feet. Flippy feet are kind of nice. Okay, let's explain why that is. So this board has the Speed Nova wireless system, which is a remarkably good 2.4 gigahertz wireless system. But they made the bottom plastic so that it will get better responses. Personally, I think this is a bit silly and they probably just wanted to save money. But there is some merit to this. Scott K, also known as Keyboard, decided to put this to the test. Granted, not a super scientific test, but he let me use his data. And it is a meaningful difference having this plastic case over something like the QK75. And go subscribe to Scott K. He deserves it. His channel is amazing. But I think it's time to test out the wireless ourselves before we break this keyboard open and destroy it. <clears throat> improve it, improve it, I mean improve it. Now, with the keyboard plugged in and turned on, you'll notice that uh, it, it has RGB. Now, the RGB is pretty standard. It lights up, 
It has a bunch of cool modes that you can control via their software and the little panel on the side, which let's talk about that in a second. That panel is really cool. And they went with shine through double shot PBT keycaps to enable the RGB to look better. Personally, this is a bit of an L, but that is my own personal opinion. Uh, we'll talk about why I hate the keycaps later. Now, a lot of different keyboards have OLED screens and it's becoming pretty popular. You know, the bongo cat on the OLED screen. Overall, the functionality of the screen is decent. You can change the color of your keyboard. You can change your volume on your PC. However, a lot of the coolest features are locked behind their software. Granted, their software is actually really good unless you fully rebind the keyboard. And it also lets you display cool stuff like computer stats on the screen. But yeah, you gotta download the software. Now, if you're looking at something like the Keychron Q1 or the GMMK Pro, they don't happen to have an OLED screen. So that is a distinguishing factor from those boards. If you wanna set yourself apart, there you go. Now, I wanna make a lot of comparisons to other boards, but without knowing a final price or release date, I kind of can't. But get subscribed and once I know those, I'll post an update. But speaking of update, Here's an update on my favorite feature of this board, the stabilizers. Now, I praise these stabilizers and the other Asus keyboards, and I was like, if they make a custom keyboard, they need to use these. And they listen to me, they actually use these. They're factory lubed and incredibly smooth with basically no ticking. They're also incredibly easy to get sounding good. Uh, kind of unlike these switches. These are the ROG NX Red switches. Now don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong, they're fine. They're factory lubed, and they're honestly better than something like a Cherry MX Red because of that. They feel consistent, but they also feel a little bit cheap. But you can swap them out at any time on this board because the board is hot swap, which makes me incredibly happy. With no soldering required, you can just pull out the switch and bada bing bada boom. One massive L, which kind of shows that they didn't do their full research into enthusiast grade stuff, is that the keyboard has north facing LEDs, which will cause interference with non long pull switches and cherry keycaps. Now, the switches that they include with the board don't have any interference problem with the keycaps they include with the board, which is good. But if you want to customize it, you can get a little bit of issues. Now, overall, the keycaps that they included with the board aren't that great. They allow RGB shine through, but they just feel really cheap. Kind of like this gasket performance that's unexistent, but we'll talk about that later. But you know what else is unexistent? Case ping and bad sounds. Like, honestly, this board sounds really decent. Does it thock? No, not really. But the stock experience that you're getting with this board is really good and better than the offerings of people like Corsair or Razer. Now, that's before customization, which I'll be getting into very shortly. I'm going to customize this thing, remember? Also, if you hear thumping, my cat sees a squirrel in the background and her tail is thumping against the wall. Now, let's talk about the modability of the Azoth with my WoW stick, which you can check out with the link in the bottom left. Click View Products. After a move... After removing a few screws, you've got the board fully disassembled, and it shows you the attention to detail that they've taken on the inside here. You can see the gaskets that we were talking about earlier. They're little jacket gaskets, which are honestly my personal favorite because you don't have to deal with adhesive. You can just take them off or remove them at will. And we can also see the spots for the stabilizers where you could remove them and put in screw-in stabilizers if you wish, which is a great touch. But you honestly shouldn't. The included stabilizers are really good. Also, we've got a aluminum top plate, which is decent, not pingy, not too bad, and heaps of foam. Some might say too much. There's a big pour-on sheet and a silicone sheet. I would argue that this is just right, but I also really like a lot of dampening in boards. Now, originally I was like, woo, I'm gonna fill this thing with something, but then it was already filled with something. So we're just gonna put it back together. Also, remember how the gasket performance sucked earlier? Well, all I had to do was just slightly unscrew all of the screws and we've got some great gasket performance just like that. Alternatively, you could take off the side gaskets and remove some of the foam. Now you could just do that little bit of gasket modding to make this board feel better but I also want it to sound better. So I'm gonna be modding it. Originally, I planned to use the included lube and just lube up all of the switches that it came with because it would sound better doing that. But over Christmas, I got trapped in California for multiple days thanks to Southwest and uh, we have less time to work with. Woo. No more keycaps, look at all. They're all, look at them, yay, no more. Anyways, with all of the keycaps off, it was time to remove the switches, which honestly, these switches were pretty tough to remove. I had Josie help. That kind of accurately displays how hard it is to get some of these switches out. Now, it's not impossible, but yeah, it's, it's kind of hard. <laughs> You're making me look like a bomb. 
Bungo. Anyways, with a little bit of help from Josie, we've got all the switches out. Uh, shout out Josie, check out the video of her building her keyboard in the top right. Now it was time to decide the switches I wanted to use with this build. Now, I am a keyboard content creator who has access to a bunch of different switches, but I decided to go with a switch that's actually incredibly similar to the ones in this board, albeit objectively better. Now these are some factory lubed red switches from Wuche Studios and I'll have them linked down below. I haven't modded these and they already feel and sound a bit better than the NX switches. Sorry guys. Now to their credit, these aren't see-through so they won't help the RGB look as good as they could. But we don't really care about that here. We have different priorities. Remember the priorities uh, sounding better, feeling better? Those are our priorities. I think maybe with a thicker layer of factory lube, the NX switches could be just as good, but overall they just sounded a bit too clacky for me. And let me just drop these keycaps in here. Huh, get it dropped. These are the DCX Jasmine keycaps that were sent to me for free by drop.com. I'll have them linked down below. Originally, I thought they looked too similar to Infinikey Delight, so I wasn't gonna use them. And then I just realized they, they just look a bit worse. So that's fine. Infinikey Delight is my set, by the way. These are double shot ABS keycaps. So different than the double shot PBT that they're working with on the Azoth. These will still sound relatively clacky, but they'll sound clacky in a better way, if that makes any sense whatsoever. And to make the stabilizers work, all you have to do is insert these little stems into your new keycaps, which is really easy. We'll talk about the final build later, but what I think would be really amazing for this is if they offered a bare bones version, as I think this core case is actually really good, depending on the price, depending on the price. I really like the OLED screen and the wireless here is very, very fast. So responsive. If you're getting this thing for gaming, you won't be disappointed. It is probably one of the best gaming keyboards out there, ignoring price, cause I can't, I don't know about price. Now, if you're getting this as an enthusiast, there are definitely better options. It literally any QK board, most zoom boards, the Keychron V1 is probably better, I ignoring the features like wireless and an OLED screen. If you don't care about those, then this doesn't bring as much to the table. Or if anything else is appealing to you, then maybe we can cross off that so you don't have to part of the title. But you know what you have to do? You have to watch the sound test comparing before and after, as I think this is a massive improvement. So nice. 